here with Brian Moeller. We're at RF Moeller's uh, 50th in France Edina location. And uh, I really appreciate that he's indulged me. I only had to ask him three times right. to sit down. And Asking wasn't the problem. Finding the time to do it was the problem. Yeah. Right. We're actually here on his day off, which uh, his wife probably appreciates because right. she gets the house to herself. I dress like this all the time, actually. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, we're going to learn a little bit more about the life of, I would say, probably the more famous uh, jeweling family in, in Minnesota. Oh, thank you. I, yeah. I still consider us to be like that little mom and pop shop sure. that you find on you know, any corner of Main Street USA mm -hmm. that just kind of got a little bit bigger. Brian, looking around, it doesn't look like a mom and pop shop. Right, right. Yeah. It still has, hopefully when you come in though, it still has the feel of a mom and pop shop. Yeah. That's what we're going for. So Brian and I know one another because he whooped my ass in squash at the Minneapolis club uh, several times. And uh, he's unfortunately, uh, he went to St. John's, which I know he's ashamed of. <laughs> and I only, I went to St. Thomas, but I, just for a few years, so at least he's got paper on me. And, uh, you know, I don't, I can't imagine what it's like carrying on the legacy of your grandfather, knowing how, you know, I was looking at your website since the 50s, mm -hmm. uh, you guys have been mm -hmm. honoring milestones of others. Well, it's, it's really, I mean, when you step back and think about it, it can be overwhelming, but when you're in the day-to-day -day of it, it's, it's actually really much an, it's, it's an honor. Um, and really, you know, some of the, the great things are when you get to help multiple generations of clients. You, my grandfather helped, you know, this client's grandparents. Mm -hmm. My father helped that client's parents, and now I get to help the third generation with um, you know, the, the life's milestones, the special moments in their lives. And that's where it's really, truly special. Sure. The Jostens of families in your lives. <laughs> that's what you guys have been. Shouldn't that be our tagline? The yeah, Jostens yeah. of uh, family no, business? No, no. <laughs> so, you know, growing up as a kid, mm -hmm. were you walking around, mm -hmm. you know, the, the shops? St. Paul yes, specifically. Yes, actually. Yeah. I have a funny story. I, um, okay. My first memory of the store was probably no more than an 800 square foot store, maybe a thousand square feet. Where was it? It was in uh, the Highland Park neighborhood in St. Sure, Paul, okay. right? Very, you know, a couple doors down from where Ooh. that location is now. Yeah. Um, and I remember, I mean, I have lots of memories, you know, meeting my father there after school, what have you. But one distinct memory, I was um, crawling around under the goldsmith's bench, okay. looking for little scraps of gold dust. Okay. And then I would bother the goldsmith going, is this gold? And then I'd have a little like envelope to put it in and then I'd find another little scrap and is this gold? And then I'd put it in an envelope and for the life of me, I don't know what happened. That, that wasn't envelope. shrinkage. You weren't bringing that home, were you? Right. Huh. That's, uh, there is an element to that. You know, uh, we do sweep up the floors after the night, but yeah, that's one yeah. of my first memories is, you know, crawling around probably five, six years old, crawling around under these benches looking for little scraps of gold. Was your pops bringing you into work every day? Not every day. Yeah. Um, my first job was when I was 13 years old, scrubbing the toilets and, you know, vacuuming the floors. Sure. And so, it, you know, absolutely it was woven in. Yeah, you were being groomed for it. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, I, school was two blocks away from, from Where the store. Where did you store. go to school? Uh, grade school was Highland Catholic in St. Yeah. Paul. And so when you're in St. Paul, when you ask about what school somebody went to, it's which Catholic grade school, sure. whether it be Nativity or... Brian's a good Catholic boy here. <laughs> Were you an altar boy? No, no. Uh, yes, I was. That's embarrassing. <laughs> we don't need to talk about that, though. Yeah, I, I don't know. Practice, yeah. not so much, but certainly in, uh, in theory. So grew up in St. Paul. Right. So what the, what's the location now, then? When did that happen? So we obviously have been in that neighborhood since yeah. 1951. That's crazy. I want to say we moved four times. Okay. This being the last one where we moved in in 2001. All right, I want to go further back then. Right. So, your, when you grew up 
it was which location? So it, it was about one floor down. Okay. Um, or I'm sorry, one, um, one retail space over. Okay. Um, on Ford Parkway. Sure. Um, it was one address down, basically. And so the first, when we moved to that location, mm. and I could go a step back and a step back before that, yeah. but when we moved to that location, we had half that property, mm. and then one of the first big expansions was to go from that, you know, 1,000, 1,500 square foot store to double the space. Sure. Um, and then we moved from there to the corner. Sure. Um, in the early 2000s. But all in that, that same stretch. All in that all same right. corner, which would be the north uh, west corner on, on Ford and Cleveland. Step before that, yeah. we were the jewelry department in the Powers Department Store. Hmm. And if people are from St. Paul, they absolutely remember the big white Powers Department Store on Ford and Cleveland. And it was the jewelry department within Powers. Um, and so I hear all these stories from these, these clients about how they remember going up the escalator at mm. Powers and waving at Mr. Moeller as Your he grandfather. was, right, as yeah. he was um, working um, in the jewelry department there. But we quickly re realized that, you know, we're not a department store. So jeweler. in the beginning, he was managing their their jewelry. It, it, it was like we, we basically yeah. subleased the space. Got it. All right. So we were our, our own identity, okay. our own you know, a uh, company within, but we leased the space for them. So as, as your grandfather was running that, when did it like, like separate, sever and become its own autonomous right. autonomous. So, um, you know, we were in a- Or was it always we, RF Moeller yeah, in power? That's exactly right. Ah, okay. So yeah, it was, you know, you had your own little separate spot Got it. and then it, yeah. RF Moeller and a little um, kind of couple of bays and, and, a, and a workbench and such. Um, and then in, the late 70s is when we moved across the street to that location I was just telling you about and then expanded, expanded, expanded. And when your grandfather was running that, did he right. have partners or did he? Just my grandmother. Okay, and was it he that was essentially going around looking for the actual like jewelry relationships globally? Right. Right. Yep. So my my grandfather was a a, watch, a watchmaker, yeah. a bench jeweler, and mm -hmm. a tinkerer. Okay. And actually, the jewelry selling aspect was just kind of a byproduct of the of the repair business. So right. if he had his way, it would just be a small repair shop to this day. And that's how it started. Repair. That's how it started. Got and it. so right. a client would walk in. He would take off his smock, go help the client with whatever they needed. Yeah then go back to the bench, put the smock back on, and go back to working. Fascinating. Right? And, and it's still the foundation of like kind of who we are and yeah. what we're about these, these days is really that service-oriented kind of um, go above and beyond for the client type of um, philosophy. So broken watches are still coming in right. and leaving working? And, and leave it, hopefully, yes. Hopefully. Yes. And so, you know, how, how does one pivot then, mm -hmm. you know, into actually moving diamonds and, right. and everything else? So my father um, bought the business from my grandfather in 1993. Okay. I, I believe that the ink was signed. And your father's name is? Uh, Mark. Mark, okay. Yep. And so um, my father turned it into what used to be a three location business. We had a um, location downtown Minneapolis when I met you. Yeah. Thankfully, we don't anymore. Um, you relinquished that before 19, right? December 31st, 2019. Wow. I know. Lucky. Gosh, right, <laughs> exactly. Um, that was an IDS. Uh, that was in no? um, the Gavaday building. Gavaday, that's which right. Which yeah, right. one, right. one, is one building over. Um, but my father turned it into the, the now two location business that it is today. Sure. Um, being, you know, um, a very large footprint in St. Paul it's on massive. Ford and Cleveland yeah. and a, um, you know, a good side business here. I mean, it's an iconic corner, Right. what you've done to it. Right. And, yeah. and so is 50th in France for that. Yeah, matter, of course. Right? And there are no better place in the Twin Cities that I'd rather have no. two jewelry stores. It's, it's, I mean, they're just beautiful neighborhoods is what right. they are. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, my, my father had the, and, the, yeah. the growth philosophy mm. of um, really being the Twin Cities premier jeweler. It's actually in our mission statement is mm. to be the Twin Cities premier jeweler. And he had that vision and he was a driver going from, you know, he'd go in the morning at six in the morning, work the bench for several hours, work the sales force for several hours, and then he'd go and attend business meetings and, um, you know, uh, networking and 
um, those type of events. In and this is how he, he created relationships right. with, yeah. Right, and then that's how he became recognized in the Twin Cities. Was there a lot of flying involved for, you know, I mean, because this is a, this is a mm -hmm. big chunk of square footage. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming you really have to create, you know, decades and years of, you know, years and decades of relationships to actually, like, offer these pieces. Right. Yeah. To, to the clients? Yeah. Well, to the clients, but from their originating sources. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, being in business for over 70 years, you know who you want to work with and who you um, want to avoid. Yeah. And so in the beginning, yes, a lot of traveling. There's large jewelry stores around the United States. Also, he would do, my father, Mark, would do uh, talks um, around the country on how to run successful businesses, mm -hmm. successful jewelry stores. Um, but once Is that what you're claiming this is? <laughs> funny guy. Um, once um, we have those vendor relationships mm -hmm. built, they know us, they know our clients, mm -hmm. and they know what we're looking for. So we don't have to do as much um, jet setting to find the, the right pieces because we've established They've those relationships. Are. Right. And have you gone on some of these trips? Mm -hmm prior to their really being solidified and long lasting, mm -hmm. like as a kid. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. So the largest jewelry uh, show in the United States mm -hmm. is in uh, Las Vegas in early June. Mm -hmm. And um, I had my, my little badge that said that I was a uh, employee of RF Moeller. Sure. And um, I would go to the, the little, the different booths looking at jewelry and I wasn't, I wasn't taken very seriously, but it was still part of, um, you know, we, I also did some other trips to New York. Mm -hmm. um, most of the jewelry is still manufactured in the um, Diamond District in New York. Mm -hmm. And so that's a lot of where our, our vendors are these days. Yeah. And I would go and visit their offices and such, yeah. And growing up in a family business, did he actually have you on the payroll or was it just an expectation that when you were in the Moeller family, right. you're just going to work for the shop, Do you hear a good unpaid story? or paid or Do you want to hear a is good it just story? an so early life take, internship? He would, he, I would be on the payroll, but I would never see a dime of that. Mm. And so what he did is he took my wages mm. and put them into an account. Uh, and then once I graduated from college, he said, hey, I have this saved up for you. Why don't you go buy it? your first house mm. so you know just, i think that's quite beautiful right to be honest. right I, and it's I, very I it's would. very controlled <laughs> and it's very focused and mm -hmm. it's smart because it's easy to piss money away right yeah right so you know i got kind of a little um surprise coming out of college and that was kind of the start in a little bit of real estate investment and mm. actually we use that money to buy a duplex and then use the duplex money to buy our commercial building. Oh, you're just in, getting me excited. Right? I know this is right up your alley uh, by our, you know, as a down payment for our commercial building in, in yeah. St. Paul. And that was finally acquired when? Oh gosh, only four or five years ago. And then of course COVID hit r right after and that yeah. was a fun experience, but yes. So we, um, that building had been around uh, since the forties uh, and most people thought we already owned it because we were you, know, you improved it heavily we were the cornerstone <laughs> of the building but we finally were able to purchase it yeah um, we've had some about, laughs about right, your old landlord about right this. exactly he's if you watch this bob we've had a lot of laughs, <laughs> i'll i'll text i'll text you a link of this so right you can watch so it um yeah and that's that was been very fortunate and hopefully yeah. that is going to you know be generational sure is, is kind of our hope yeah and do you have siblings uh, yes. So Are they also in this? One is, one is not. Okay. My brother runs the operations for the business. Mm. He would never be comfortable doing this. What's his name? His name is Jamie All James. Right. Um, he is a bean counter and he tempers myself and my uncle is also in the business mm. um, from going overboard on buying and spending. And mm. so he's the bean counter. And then I have Which is important. Very important, yeah. especially you can get carried away Absolutely. in this business with inventory yeah. and such. You um, need dreamers and you need, you know, right, cynics. Like somebody to, yeah. to pull you back. It's a balance. Right. Yeah. And then uh, my sister is a nurse practitioner. So Here she in is, town? Yes. Whereabouts? Uh, she is with the um, Illini um, group. Um, mm. She works in neurosurgery. 
um, and she kind of goes around the various Illini hospitals mm. um, following certain doctors, I guess. All right, so going back in the past, you're cleaning the toilets and you're stealing <laughs> the gold from the floor and, sh and shavings and such. Did you just always know no. that, no, you were thinking maybe a different trajectory with your life. Right, right. Yeah. So I would work some summers when mm. I was a teenager. Uh, Don't say you were a painter. Uh, no, in the, in the business. Ah, okay. Um, and then um, when I was 18 years old, mm. I got in a fight with my dad over something silly and then stormed out of the business vowing never to come back. Because pretty common for us men at when 18. we're 18 years old, we're obviously very much smarter than our mm -hmm. than our parents, right? Uh, and so I went. They don't out, know dirt, right? That's exactly <laughs> what we thought back then, and what <laughs> yeah. I thought. Um, and so um, I did. I I always said whenever I was at industry um, events through my 20s that I was the smart molar because I decided never to come into the business. I was mm. in the glamorous world of health insurance sales. No, right. Um, cubicles as far as the eye can see, John. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was it was wonderful. Glorious. Where was the office? Uh, Plymouth. So, um, and then when I turned thirty, I wised up and thought, which that was maybe, way before me, I think. Right, right, uh, and felt that maybe it wasn't the worst thing in the world to join the family business. Yeah. Um, you know, I had to have some long talks with my wife about you know the hours mm. and. You know, I don't see my family from Thanksgiving to Christmas, right? That's accountants work during tax season. You know, people in retail work Which during the holiday sense. season, yeah. right? And so we had to have those conversations, and we decided to go for it. And at that point... How were you asked, though? I like, was like not asked. You just said, hey, Dad, I have decided I am going to... Uh, reduce mm -hmm. your workload and I'm gonna mm -hmm. step in or, or how'd you so convince him uncle, or negotiate? My uncle was the president of the company. I All did right. not even approach my father. I approached my uncle with a resume in my hand wow. saying I'd like to apply for a, it's quite sa humble, for a actually, sales position. To right. not expect that you could right. have it to right. actually do it in the And then I went through the interview process right. like we would to this day for any sales associate including a personality profile test that we go really? through. Mm -hmm. A Myers Briggs? Uh, it's something it's called, similar. Yeah, it's called. I'll have to tell you, show you it later. It's called uh, Caliper, um, hmm. and it'll tell you more about yourself than you knew about yourself. Um, and so then I was living in St. Paul. Who said you got the job though? Um, my hmm. uncle and then the former manager here, Amy Dinah. Interesting. And I always thought that I would work in our St. Paul store because I lived right there. All my friends were there. That was obviously my client base. Yeah. The best thing that could have ever happened to me was to um, go to Edina. Mm -hmm. I drove right by our St. Paul store every day to drive 25 minutes to our Edina store mm -hmm. um, and where I would not be under the shadow of my father and my uncle and everybody else in the family business. Growth through getting out of your comfort right. zone. Right, and so then they, yeah. um, the manager running the uh, Dyna location basically trained me in at, at, from that point forward. And then I worked my way up from sales associate to assistant manager to manager of the downtown Minneapolis store, manager of the Edina location, and now I don't really have a title. I just I kind of do things. <laughs> I'm in the relationship business. You are in the Same. relationship right. business. And I appreciate the texts and calls. Right. <laughs> so you, did you have like a, I don't know. I mean, people have, they tend to have something that happens within their, their soul or, or some kind of a, an event that makes them want to make a bigger decision like this. That's a great question. You know, it's not just, oh, I'm just going to go. I tired of cold calling. Uh, um, so that was that kind of life in, yeah. in health insurance sales. I got, you know, it was my former boss then. At one point we were having beers at happy hour. He's like, what are you doing here? You have something so, you know, like, uh, so he knew everybody like, knew that everybody knew right. except for me. And so, you All know, right. he, you, he's like, you have something just so meaningful. Why don't you, why don't you go? And mm -hmm. he, you know, and yeah, there was, there was part of that, um, you know, just not having a rudder, right? Mm -hmm. That even, you know, as a, as a young male, even through your 20s, it's sometimes tough to find a rudder, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, you know, having this out there. Typically, it comes from someone that takes an interest and says, 
you know, I care about you, so do it this way. Right. Or something like that. Right. And yeah. from an unlikely source, my former boss, yeah. right? That basically, maybe I was, maybe he was trying to get rid of me. I don't know. <laughs> Brian, you're easy to like, so <laughs> right. I'm sure that's not the reason. <laughs> You know. So, um, yeah, and then that's, um, and there's a lot of apprehension to be sure about it. Actually, I remember being in my uncle's office with the resume, like, more or less shaking because it yeah. was such a, a monumental decision. Because it wasn't, it wasn't going to just be an automatic approval or yes. Right. You, had right. to, you truly did have to earn it. And I always yeah. thought that, I've always told people that I had a harder road than anyone else because Are you the oldest? Yes. Mm. And well, then, and everybody has higher expectations for... The boss's oldest. son and yeah. than they would for a regular sales associate. Or well, you're not employee. a degenerate, so I mean. Well, <laughs> not anymore, as far as you know. <laughs> so you get here, or you you get here at what time of the day typically on a, on a weekday? You're not getting here at like 6, because that's not the No, because hours. we work yeah. evenings. Yeah. Um, so I like to be here about 7.30, 8 o'clock. Okay. Um, I, I have nice quiet time until the staff arrives at nine and then the doors open at 10. Mm -hmm. But once the doors open, it, every day is different. Um, and so then I usually work, you know, um, throughout the day and have appointments probably two or three nights in the evening. And then the other nights I try and get home to the family. What's turnover like in a jewelry shop? Um, that's a great question. You're and talking, do we call it a jewelry shop talking, or is it a jewelry store? Um, it is a jewelry boutique. Boutique. No. Yeah. Ah, it's a jewelry store. Sure. Um, are you talking employee turnover or turnover? Yeah. yeah. Like how many times have you had to say, I mean, this I mean, is, it's, you don't, you know, you don't want to seem like some dictator, but no, I'm sure no, you've no, had you to can't. let people go. And, because the, our yeah. people are, um, our Life relationships one. with our, our clients, they're yeah. the utmost importance. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, making sure that this is a place, if you're going to spend 40, 50, 60 hours a week somewhere, it better be fun, sure. right? It better be enjoyable. Now, there are times that when you're the, the, the top of the uh, pyramid that you have to make some decisions, sure. certainly. But, you know, I love to have a, I, I routinely think of different ways to thank my team for being absolutely wonderful, top of, top uh, I would say that it's the top team in the United States for a level of education and service and knowledge. Do you send them away and have constant certifications in these sorts yes, of things? Yes, absolutely, oh, that's we do. Yep. So with that, um, I, you know, yes, you do have a little bit of turnover. Yeah. But if I, you know, if I'm taking somebody from that was kind of the best of where they came from, whether that be another independent or um, a chain store or something like that. It's a solid 12 to 18 month process wow. before they're up to our speed. Wow. Okay. Our clients have a huge expectation. This is like an apprenticeship us. almost. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's, it can be very frustrating because you come from being the best of where you are mm -hmm to suddenly having to almost start over. And I've almost sometimes had to deprogram my team in order to like teach them how we're different and how we do things mm. and our service first focus. One of the things that, not to interrupt, right, sure. one of the things I've always appreciated about whenever I have encouraged someone to walk in the door is I always say, Brian's gonna teach you, he's gonna educate you, the team's mm -hmm. gonna educate you on what it is. Mm -hmm. And I think Everybody, you know, they've always called me afterwards and have said, I've learned so much, mm -hmm. so much that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. You can Google or you can be taught, right. you know, and I think that's an incredibly important right. uh, component of, of RF and, Mola. And no matter where you go, whether it be the internet or, yeah. you know, other retailers, most places have an agenda. Yeah. Even the internet has an agenda, right? Well, we're all sales guys. Right. And yeah. my feeling wholeheartedly is that I rather you not choose to work with me and say that you had a great experience mm. than to then feel like you got slighted when you did work with me mm. or that you got um, you know bad information or um, were misled or mm. anything of that nature so I've always felt that way and it's a really enjoyable process to really bring somebody through what is the happiest moment of their entire life if we're talking about an engagement ring yeah Right, and to teach them about why something the size of a pebble sometimes can cost as much as a car or even a house, sure. right? And what the difference is in quality so they can make an informed decision on what is important 
to them. Mm. I love that process. The team loves the process. And so you go from, if we're going back to like the, our, you know, our, our team and, and their development, a lot of other places are simply, you know, how do I get money in the cash register the quickest, sure. right? Yeah. And to take these people away from that mentality and turn them into, you know, and teach them that, you know, really we are here to really be excited about their moment, to care, to show them, to spend the time with them, so then they can, you know, really make that, that important decision. Brian, themselves. you're good at slowing it down, mm -hmm. which I think is very important, mm -hmm. you know, because people want, they don't want to have like an immediate decision on these sorts of there things. There are so yeah. many theories in retail about what makes a retail, uh, successful retail yeah. establishment. And part of what people are looking for now is the experience, yeah. right? Yeah. It's not as much about the transaction. Mm. Um, the most successful retailers in the in the country, um, probably the world, but in the country, you talk about these, you know, these developments. What they bank their success on is the amount of time that the client spends in the retail environments, mm. whether it be a Barnes and Noble sitting in the corner just simply reading. Sure, those tend to be the most successful retail establishments. And that's not why I do it, right? That's just kind of a byproduct of what we do, mm. is to really spend the time with them to show that we do truly care mm. about their experience. And then they ultimately choose us like they would choose their dentist or their doctor. Do you, so going back again, did you spend time with your grandfather? Not much. Not he, much. He passed in the early 90s. Oh, okay, so you um, were young. When, yes, 90, about only like a year or two after my dad purchased mm -hmm. the business. And I was in eighth grade. Okay. Uh, and so not much. We went fishing a little bit. He was, um, he, he was a um, World War II vet. Yeah. And um, very much of that mindset and mentality. Stoic? Very stoic. Yeah, because um, he saw some shit. I would never talked about it. He was in the Battle of the Bulge. Never talked about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, There's only and, so much violence you can absorb, right, right, and then, right. yeah. And you know, it is, he was the type. He was that generation, kind of the Mad Men generation, mm -hmm. right? And he carried a case of Sunnybrook bourbon wherever he went. Uh, was he a smoker? Yes, he was. Uh, Merits, I believe. Um, and you know, it's. I just hear stories about how, like at Thanksgiving dinner, he put a cigarette out in his plate when he was done, and stuff like that, and so. Yeah, but at the same time, there's a side of him I did not see, the side that I hear all these stories about, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the clients came in and his um, garage door opener was broken. Mm -hmm. So after work, my father went over to his house to fix his garage door mm -hmm. because he was a tinker, right? Another story is a kid came in. He made worked, himself useful. Right. Yeah, that's another, nice. uh, another story, a kid came in and wanted a, a leather strap for his watch and couldn't mm. afford it. My dad and my grandfather was like, pay me when you can. You know, and that kind of like really, it, it probably wasn't even a philosophy mm. for a retail back then. It was probably just the right thing to do as a member of the community. Yeah. And that's what he was about. That That's that whole side of him that I didn't see, but that's the legacy that, you know, my father carried on and is still true, you know, to this day. But that's why your name is also interwoven in the fabric of the, mm -hmm. of the Twin Cities, is because of so these sorts of things. Well, it is. Right. It's just, it's so I say or we're not. Still, we're still a know, mom and pop You may shop. not have a commercial every five minutes, but right. everybody knows you. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think we do a, an all right job, and we're yeah. hopefully going to be around for the next 70 years, so. You have kids. I do. Do they come in? Uh, they do. Um, I would say not too often, um, a couple of times a month. You know what? So I'll run. Why aren't you making them? Screw, uh, they're still six and eight. They'll, okay. They'd, they'd probably more likely to take something out of the case and put it on their Yeah, they'd, and, they'd and, bleach and it, the, the, the right, carpet on, on accident. The, the jewelry would end up in their toy boxes at yeah. home or something. But um, one of their favorite things is actually they come in when I have to run into the store to do something or check mm -hmm. something or grab something. They mm -hmm. love coming with me. Mm -hmm. Um, they love running around here when the store is dark and empty. Mm -hmm. um, we offer ring pops to uh, kids when they come in. So mm -hmm. my kids always come back with two ring pops. And then there's always like, you know, Sprite in the refrigerator. So they think it's a grand old time to come sure. and visit, uh, visit dad at work. And, you know, the, the, 
the, the you know, the, my, my team knows my kids very well and mm -hmm. my, my kids know most of my team and, you know, there's events around the 50th and France neighborhood, like the Halloween event that they come and they'll spend time, they'll take pictures. And so, yeah, they're around a lot. How long has the longest employee been here? Um, or not just here, but just in RF Mola? 28. That's, all, that's a family member at that point? No. 28 years? There's uh, three or four that are in the over 25. Well. Uh, and I don't think they've heard, hit 30 yet. Um, and so, yeah, those, it's, that's also an honor that somebody chooses to, especially these days. You need to make sure that they honor that milestone. Right, right. <laughs> they, they, well, I, I would think that they would say that they're Don't well just give them a plaque. Well Let's talk care. about a watch maybe. I don't know. That's part of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I would say that they would, um, you know, they, they've, we feel as our team is our family, and I would think that they would uh, reiterate that second. Yeah. Is your father still with us? Yes. Yep. How, how much of involvement does he have? None, thankfully. He's out. Uh, yeah. So, um, listen, I would love for um, Mark to come around more often because he is, you know, we're, we're just building on what he, he built. Sure. Um, when my, my uncle, myself, and my brother purchased the business from him, say, let's call it seven years ago, um, you know, we thought that he would be in here looking over our shoulder. Micromanaging. Point, pointing, pointing Which fingers. is usual for a family business. Right. And he? Even when the kids buy the business away Absolutely. from the he parent. built it. And yeah. that's to be expected. I know, I know a couple like that. He did a yeah. great job of, being, of, of stepping back and well. continuing to step back. And so after, you know, he, you know, put the pieces in place, relinqu relinquished control, he still did a lot of the marketing, mm -hmm. and he loves the estate buying, the vintage jewelry. That's kind of his passion. Is he going to auctions or is he uh, going to homes? No, and the, he's most just of it just comes to us, yeah. Or, uh, people, or he would do phone calls, yep. Yeah. Um, but he loves going through it and, and, you know, he could tell you about all the vintage pieces and mm. the eras and, you know, what's indicative of the era and what it stood for. And that's really his passion in the business. And then yeah, from there, he's took a, another step back and another step back. And right now he's in Florida. <sighs> mm -hmm. We're not going to say that he escaped because we all love Minnesota. Right. Okay. So then Minnesota, let's talk about the last few years. Mm -hmm. What was it like at the shop? It was, um, it's been an interesting few years. Yeah. Parts, right? but, you had COVID yeah. and then you had the, the, yeah. the unrest and both of which uh, affected us. Um, COVID was tough. You can't imagine anything more stressful than sitting in a dark store with all the jewelry locked in the safe, mm -hmm. unable to service your clients. Um, we had morning meetings, morning phone meetings every single day with um, my partners, with our CFO, just wondering what the heck we're going to do. And this is obviously before, you know, the, the, the government stepped in. Sure. So um, that was, I never want to go through that again. Uh, you know, Scary. To, right. And, yeah. to, to and be the bills honest, aren't stopping. No, of course yeah. not. Um, you can write your letters to your vendors and say, hey, you know, we're in the same. We know we owe areas. you right. this, but you're not getting that right now. Please right, right. work with us. Right. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. part of working with your friends over 70 years is they understood they, you know, we both all came out of it with better relationships and a better, um, you know, appreciation for each other. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to, uh, to be honest, Joffrey, I, I felt like I failed the family business mm -hmm. because the business was, gonna, was going to go under mm -hmm. because we had our doors locked for two months and there was wow. nothing we could do. Um, and then thankfully we came out of it significantly stronger than before and, um, you know, in the end, um, for whatever reason, whether it be lack of travel, um, lack of other ways to spend your discretionary income, people weren't going to Vikings games, what you name it, they had, they had. Some people had extra right. and they were buying some right. beautiful pieces the, out of. It was of, the best yeah. two or three years in the history of the, of the jewelry industry. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, yes, we've done for really For rings well. or for watches? Um, for everything. Um, for you know, and there's another aspect, I think, that goes a little bit unsaid in the industry in that people were taking a bit of time to reflect on their lives mm -hmm. and change their priorities. Mm -hmm. 
And so being in the celebration business, I think that that also had something to do with it. People um, were honoring their spouse. Yeah. Thank God for sticking with me all these years. Right, and we can't being leave in the lockdown, house and being in yeah. lockdown with me, and you know, you know, there's a little bit of diplomacy there too. Right. <laughs> you know, the, bringing home something beautiful mm -hmm. might calm the yeah, yeah. the so tightness it, of a house if you're indoors for yeah. a year. Yeah. So that was, you know, we we thankfully, but you know, again, I I sat right at that um, in the bar there on mm -hmm. a stool, um, and I scratched and clawed for two months. Um, we had a drawer full of unclaimed um, repairs. Wow. I called every last one of them and said, I will deliver it to you. I have extra time. Mm -hmm. And so just to do something from a service standpoint to, you know, remind people that we are still here and, you know, we're going to be here after this mm -hmm. is all done. So there's um, a whole, like, again, I, I don't want to have to ever go back there. That was... That was a point that was very difficult in business. And, you know, we're not alone, but we're stronger for it on the other side. You made it through. Right. So Your wife is probably immeasurably proud of you. Your kids will never know what it's like. No. They were, no. They were little. Yeah. They were little three years ago. And what's the future? It's a great question. Is um, it two locations? Are there more locations? Do you ever scout and, and think, always imagine? always looking. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of things you have to consider about those, about locations. First is how far we really draw from. Sure. Right? Um, I have clients that come from Hutchinson, Waconia, Orno, Shoreview, um, you know, and you name it. Probably I have clients that, you know, drive down from St. Cloud and mm. up from Rochester. So, you know, any location... You may not actually be of benefit. Right. Would yeah. you just be cannibalizing from the business sure. as it is? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Rolex is our, um, you know, one of our more important vendors, and they've closed uh, about 1,100 stores around the United States since when I started in this business. Mm. So they're contracting um, and not expanding. Mm. So that would be a, you know, a decision in expansion. Are less of them being purchased or are less of the more entry level pricing being purchased? Or no, is it just everything across more, the board? There's more being purchased than ever before uh, ah. when it comes to that brand. Um, mm. I think that they just, uh, I know that they want to have a little bit more say in how their brand is distributed. Mm. And by having fewer, better partners. They're trying to close their loop. Right, yeah. yeah having okay. fewer, better partners is going to um, allow them to have more control over their brand, which mm. deservedly slow. So, so they're the most recognized brand in the, in the jewelry industry. So there is a lot of those factors. Um, you know, we do have a lot of opportunity even where we're at mm -hmm. um, to continue to to go upward and onward. So I'm not saying that, you know, expansion is out of the question, but there's just some things that we'd have to It simply may not be necessary to right. increase right. the square right. footage. So, yeah. you know, sometimes I can't even imagine, you know, if I had double the amount of stores and, you know, where then I Then you would have to spend right. money on radios. Right. Then, <laughs> Radio right. advertising. Right, right. Uh, or just, yeah. you know, I would be- you Although know, you do a little being, bit, I feel, I think. Uh, KS95. Yeah. How do you unpack the day? How do I unpack the day? Well, I try not to take work home with me. Oh, that must be nice. I have to figure that out. Um, I'm not. When I'm your I age, know, maybe I'm, I'll. I've actually gotten really good at it. I used to be terrible at it yeah. to the point that my wife is like, I never know what's going on at work. Um, I used to, yeah, whatever, I'd wear my heart on my sleeve, still do, but you know, if I was having a great day, I'd take it home, and if I was having a tough day, mm. I'd take it home. Um, and so that's the first thing. Um, I used to, when I first started, I was in the business 24-7, 365, mm. right? The only things I read were trade magazines. The only thing I, you know, studied, I'd go see speakers, I'd watch TED Talks. I just, it meant, and then I realized that that's just not a healthy way to live. Mm. And so now mostly what I read are, I'm actually in the Game of Thrones books right now, right? And just something that is completely, you know, where I can escape 
mm -hmm. from here because I'm I'm still here, you know, almost seven days a week. I, I take calls on Sundays. I have meetings on my day off. I was in meetings all day today. Um, so that's kind of what I do to step back. Um, I try but and But does have, Kelly encourage it? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah she, uh, so you she couldn't just, be who you are without her? Oh, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. She's, I mean, to be the wife of a jeweler, there's the benefits, don't get me wrong. But also, you got to understand that in a family business, and you know this, you mm -hmm. run your own business, mm -hmm. it is a 24-7 job, right? Yes. And there's there's phone calls in the middle of the night for from the alarm company and, um, you know, all that. So, you know, at a, sometimes she says that I should need to, I need to take a further step back, but that's impossible because mm -hmm. when your name's on the front door, there's, um, you know, there's, there's expectations. There's expect and there's expectations I have for myself, yeah. right? Um, and so I have a couple of hobbies. Um, I have a very nice garden that I don't know that I'm going to do as as elaborate of a garden this year, just because it is flowers or veggies, both. Um, and then the kids love going up to the garden and picking pea pods right off the, the vine, and so that's fun. Um, very few of the veggies actually make it into the house. Better um, that it's veggies and not cannabis. Right. It is definitely not. No, you know, it just, um, I think the neighbors would figure that out real <laughs> yeah. quick and maybe they'd invite themselves over. Yeah. Um, and then um, I, I do ice fish, I do open water fish, and then I need to get better at golf. I really enjoy it. I just suck at it. Do you ever leave Minnesota? Um, not just for trade shows? Um, yes. Yes and no. Um, so the past couple of vacations I've had this year was one to Tucson. I took a couple of days before uh, and uh, the Tucson Gem Show, and that's mm -hmm. the largest gem mineral and fossil show in the world. And then I had meetings in the Bahamas. I know, rough, rough life, but I, it was four days of meetings. I pulled the kid out, kids out of school and they came with me. That took was a nice extra, gift. Yep, took, a, yeah. took an extra couple of days there and enjoyed the Bahamas. But really my favorite vacation is to rent a shack uh, in northern Minnesota somewhere, mm -hmm. um, turn off my phone as best as I can, uh, and let my children be little feral children running around the lake catching fish and bugs and you know getting dirty and that's sure. kind of my my favorite um, vacation. So I do, you know, listen. I've been, you know, I haven't been outside of the United States as much as I'd like. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't travel much when I was younger, and then I have. Um, you know, young kids now, but, but I get around, I get around It's, But yes, I, I do enjoy that um, the kind of more quiet, do nothing, pick up a book, you know. Do you try to do something different than the way that your father interacted with you, that you do mm -hmm. with your kids? Yeah, and so I mean, my, love it or hate it, my dad was a workaholic, right? Yeah, you now, were his associate. Right, and I mean, he when was, you, when you he were was quite the, young. Um, he was the manager of my t-ball game, but it was my mom that would, so I was in hockey, mm -hmm. and my mom was the one that would go to tournaments in Brainerd, mm -hmm. and then maybe my father would show up like Saturday night at, you know, nine o'clock or something like that after he'd closed the store. Um, the great double-edged sword of running a family Right, business. right, and yeah. you know, so we um, spent some, our, our weekends on the St. Croix River, mm -hmm. and he would um, wake up Saturday morning, drive into work, and then come back Saturday afternoon while we were, you know, playing around on the St. Croix River. So there's, um, I don't, I just don't, I don't think you can do that and have a balanced life. Listen. Well, he didn't. Right. Yeah. And, but at the same time, like he said, if, and I, I firmly believe and this. And I guarantee if, your grandfather didn't even right. understand the concept of what right, right. balance was. You know, and, it's a very modern, you know, concept. Totally. <laughs> and to his point was always that, like, you know, the business is everything. The business yeah. is why we get to have these nice things, Absolutely. right? And there Each is, generation is trying to help the next generation probably have a little bit more balance. Right, yeah. right. And so, you know, there is that part, and I'll never forget that part, and I'll hopefully yeah. instill that if my children do choose to come into the business, um, that, listen, without the business, you know, what would we do? Do you hope they do? Um, yes. Yep. Um, they're too young now to, to start to think. Yeah, there, but those one, inclinations won't right. exist quite. And yet. one thing we require is for family members is they go out for three years and do something on their own. Ah, that's interesting. Right. 
Yeah. So, um, yeah, we, you know, we'll have to think about what that looks like. They need the mistreatment of, of authority by, and, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Um, and so, you know, all three of us, me and my two business partners, we went out on our own and did, did something. So. Yeah. Uh, Brian, thank you very much for letting us camp out in your space and have these chats. And I hope everyone that, that uh, you know, spends the time and, and gets through this whatever hour that we've done here. <laughs> and uh, if you've got questions about RF Moeller, um, give me a shout and I'm just going to talk terribly about them. No, I'm just, right. uh, I, I still have to work on my... that's how you get in ahead of yeah. life is you... Uh, no, not you, at all. You talk bad about I don't, people, I don't, but no. hey, yeah. I appreciate it. I, I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you very much. And I do have to work on my squash game. Actually, the last time I played squash was, was with Stefan. So. I heard. He said so, yeah. Right. Yeah. Sounds fun. Invite me. All right. Thus, thus ends. Thank you.